Hey everyone, it's Pastor Tom and Tammy, and we are here again with a brand new series, and I'm very excited about mm -hmm. this. Uh, this series is called Trapped, and I think there are a lot of people who are trapped, and we're going to talk about what that trap is mm -hmm. in just a minute, but first, let's pray and get started. Tammy, will yeah. you pray? Yes. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this time together tonight. And we just pray for uh, just a time of sharing your word and learning and that as people are listening, that they are receiving revelation from the Holy Spirit themselves. And we just thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, we've been um, talking in the last month or so about some things. And uh, this came up and we felt like, wow, what a... What a perfect opportunity to begin to talk about uh, what it means to be trapped. And many, many people are trapped in all sorts of things. You know, um, uh, places where they sell drugs um, and use drugs are called trap houses. And I think some people are really trapped in a house of offense and unforgiveness. And we want to talk about that. There's a very good book that we've actually done the study uh, several times in the last few years called The Bait of Satan uh, by John Bevere. And it's a great study. We, we've learned so much in our study groups about that over the, the last couple times we've done it. And we thought it would be good just to talk about what offense is and why it's not good and what is unforgiveness and what that can do to your life. I'm not sure how many episodes this will be, but we're not in a hurry. We just want to do this right mm -hmm. and really share with you very important things from God's Word. So that's what we're going to do. So yes. let's get started. Okay. Can you turn to Proverbs 18, 19? Proverbs 18, 19. 19. So we're going to talk about way, offense Tom. being a trap, and it is a <laughs> trap of Satan, of the devil. And it will trip you up, uh, snare you up, trap you up, and cause a lot of issues in your life. And we're going to talk about some of that. Mm -hmm. It sure can. It can make a mess, actually. Yes. It can make a huge mess. Oh, for goodness sakes, my fingers are really dry. And I'm having a hard time getting this page. All right, 1819. Mm -hmm. uh, a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. And I'm going to read this in the New Living Translation, that was the King James, it's harder to make amends with an offended friend than to capture a fortified city. Arguments separate friends like a gate locked with iron bars. What do you want to say about that, Tammy? Well, it talks about your brother or your friend, so it's talking about other Christians, your brothers, your sisters in Christ, and that when they become offended, that it's harder to win them back Mm -hmm. than it is to conquer a strong walled city with iron bars. I think about the Bible story of the Battle of Jericho that had the big tall walls around it. Um, in the biblical times <clears throat> when Proverbs was written, that's how they protected cities. They protected cities by putting a big strong wall around it. And people who get hurt or offended, uh, that's what they do. They build a wall around themselves. They, they build a wall around themselves to shut everybody else out mm -hmm. and to protect themselves. You can't see the wall, but they build the wall mm -hmm. all the same. And so an offended person, um, they'll not, they will not give love because they want to protect themselves um, at the expense of others. So they will protect themselves at all costs. Mm -hmm. um, they will not give anything to anybody uh, to protect themselves. And they'll often try to get other people to join them in in the offense. And that's one thing that um, is very harmful within the body of Christ um, and families where somebody's hurt, they're offended, they're upset. Uh, it can be real or perceived offense. And then they try to get other people to join in with them. Mm -hmm. they, they are 
gossiping and talking and trying to get other people to join in in the offense. Mm -hmm. So let me just say this. I think, um, well, I don't think, I know, and I know uh, probably everybody watching this video knows and understands that we live in a culture that is perpetually offended mm -hmm. at something. You know, there's always something that is going to offend you. Um, it happens to me, it ha you know, um, everyone is susceptible mm -hmm. to this. Um, and I, I guess <clears throat> what causes offense is really what we, um, we need to step back for a second. And I think, this is, an, this is my opinion, I think offense can be caused by many different things. One is uh, something, somebody did something mm -hmm. to me that hurt my feelings or made me upset or uh, caused me to lose something. Maybe um, I've talked with folks who are, uh, you know, their spouse left them for another woman or another man and uh, they are living in, and that's, we're gonna talk about unforgiveness, but they're offended mm -hmm. by that other person. That person has done something to them. It's hurt them. So the first thing that we do when we experience an offense, it could be any, anything can cause offense. Oh, why did you do that? Why did you say that? Why did you look at me that way? You know, we're offended immediately. And our culture's experiencing this to a cancerous level mm -hmm. in my mind. It is cancerous that our society um, really promotes people to live in their offense mm -hmm. and to live it, you know, embrace it and, you know, uh, whatever. I mean, that is dangerous and it's not good. You will not grow if you do not get away from that offense. So whatever causes that offense, what, you know, if you're offended by something, you need to step back and say, what, why am I getting offended? Why am I getting upset? At, and you know, I think offense, another word for that is upset. You know, I'm upset with you, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, really what you're saying is you're offended at this person. You're offended at what they did, what they said, how they looked at you. Um, that's dangerous. Or what they didn't say. Or what they didn't say, or what they didn't do. Right. It's dangerous to live your life in that state of being. It will stunt your growth in every area of your life. You need to be careful. So what causes offense? Lots of different things. I mean, I mean you know, like I just said, so we gotta, we gotta get that in our minds mm -hmm. first, I think. Offense is a trap. So why is it a trap? It, it's a trap because Satan uses something uh, that is going to upset us to get us to regress or to step back. And then like Tammy just said, to build up those walls. I'm building up walls. I'm not gonna let you hurt me. I'm not gonna let you say anything to me. I'm gonna run away from you versus facing it head on. And maybe that wall causes somebody to uh, stay in their house and, and sink into depression. Mm -hmm. Maybe that wall causes somebody to, um, you know, ignore somebody and maybe uh, even cause a safety issue with somebody where they're just ignoring things. So offended looks like being hurt, being hard hearted, constantly seeing yourself as a victim. And why, you know, what do you mean? But I am a victim. Somebody did this to me and somebody did that to me and, and I, you know, I, 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 me, me, me. Wait a minute, Tammy, you're, you're, yeah. those are fighting They're there. And you may be, have seeing been. Seeing yourself right, as a victim. Continuously, like living in, mm -hmm. in being a victim, feeling wronged, bitterness, envy, jealousy, resentment, angry, blaming other people. Mm -hmm. So sometimes 
people feel like that because something truly did happen. There was something, something happened. Maybe you were wrong. Maybe you were a victim of something. But if you live and stay in that offense, that is going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. And it will, um, it will keep you as a victim. It will keep you remaining that way. And you are going to be the one that's, your growth is going to be stunted. Mm -hmm. Your health is going to be affected. Your life is going to be affected. Well, I think it's really important for us to understand that if we live in this hurt, this hard-heartedness, seeing ourselves constantly as a victim, feeling wronged, bitter, envious, jealousy, jealous, resentful, angry, and blaming other people, if we live in that, we are not living in what the Word of God says we are in Christ. The Bible says that we are overcomers in Christ. The Bible says that we are victorious in Christ. So how can you simultaneously be a victim and be victorious? It's impossible. Mm -hmm. You cannot be both at the same time. One is going to overpower the other. And what is going to to give that overpowering power? It's you Mm -hmm. and whatever Whichever you allow or whichever you feed is what's going to be prevalent in your life. You know, some people don't want to hear this uh, because this is placing responsibility on your victory and you being healed in whole of offense in your lap. Mm -hmm. It's not my responsibility. It's your responsibility. If you want to walk in victory, you are going to have to be the one to stand up and say, I am victorious in Mm -hmm. Christ. Jesus lives in me. Therefore, I am an overcomer. Mm -hmm. I overcome hurts. I overcome hard-heartedness. I overcome a victim mentality. I overcome feeling wronged. I overcome bitterness and envy and jealousy and resentment and anger and blaming other people. I am an overcomer. Mm. We can't talk about freedom from offense and not talk about being an overcomer in Mm -hmm. Christ because that's where our victory comes from. Can you turn to Luke 17, 1 through 4? What about Proverbs 6? We'll go back to that one. We'll go back to that. Uh, Luke 17, 1 through 4. This scripture talks about offense is going to come. It's going to happen. And why is it going to come? Why is it going to happen? Because we're human beings. We live on this earth with other human beings. And and humans, people are going to let you down. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. Bad things can happen to people. Bad things can happen in their childhood. Bad things can happen at any time. Bad things can happen Mm -hmm. at work. And all of those are opportunities to be offended. So can you read? You know, and that's really a good point, Tammy. Uh, there's there's some books out there's a book specifically with the title why do I've never read it but why do bad things happen to good people it does and it's unfortunate but we do live in a fallen <clears throat> in a fallen world not everybody knows Jesus Christ you know so um, what it was Luke 17 1 through 4 oh okay uh, then, he, <clears throat> then he said to the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than, he, then, uh, than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother trespass against you, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. And if he re- trespass against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day re- uh, turn again to you, saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. This is Jesus talking, talking to the disciples, and he's saying, offense is going to come. It's going to mm-hmm. come. It's going to happen. Um, I guess buckle up, be ready. It's going to happen. But Jesus said, woe to those who cause it. Woe to those who create it. I'm not sure what the other versions use for the word woe. But uh, it's going to come, but it's not good for the people that cause it to come. Mm -hmm. Jesus said it's better that 
the millstones hung around their neck and basically that they're drowned, that they're gone because <coughs> of creating that offense. And then he goes on to say, if your brother does something against you and he repents of it, he says, hey, I'm sorry, I, I, I shouldn't have done that. You forgive. And if he does it again, you forgive. And if he does it again, you forgive. And if he does it again, you forgive. And um, this is how you get healed of offense. Mm -hmm. And it's what Jesus has told us to do, and it does work. I want you to read in Proverbs. These are things that God hates. Uh, Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. I'm going to read this out of the New Living. Okay. <clears throat> There are six things the Lord hates, no, seven things he detests. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that kill the innocent, a heart that plots evil, feet that race to do wrong, a false witness who pours out lies, a person who sows discord among brothers. So one of the things that God specifically says he hates is somebody who is sowing discord, creating offense in the church among his brothers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, another thing that's listed in there was murder, um, shedding innocent mm -hmm. blood. Shedding innocent blood. So murder is listed there. And if you think about uh, God is in the same verse there, he's putting murder and stirring up offense and trouble in the church side by side. Or with together. anybody, not just with, in the right. church. Well, it says among, among brethren. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know for sure what that said, but it, it's among well, brethren. that could be families, right. that could be churches, that could be, that could, in my mind, that could be work. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I've worked with people that were, seemed like they were always trying to create trouble yeah. at work. It's like, why? Why, why and, do you want to create trouble with other people at work? And if you, as a Christian, would take the viewpoint of trying to create trouble and stir stuff up mm -hmm. and cause offense is like mm -hmm. murder, think of it that way. Mm -hmm. And and you're not going to do it. You're going to do whatever um, you can to prevent walking I, into that. At one point, uh, in the, one of the, one of the places I worked at, I took a little uh, three by five card and I wrote on it, "I am a peacemaker." And um, the people that like to sow discord in this department I worked in. Uh, were at my desk one day sitting with me going over some things and they saw that and they just looked at me and looked at it like, what does that mean, you know? And it was, I don't know if they ever got it or not, but it was like, I wanted to remind myself, I am not like them. Mm -hmm. They sow discord. They are constantly trying to agitate people and get people worked up and frustrated and discouraged and angry. <clears throat> I'm not going to, I'm not going to go there. I'm just not going to go there. And I'm a peacemaker. I will be a peacemaker in this place. And um, it was interesting. I worked there for a long time. It was hard. It was very hard. But God blessed me in that place. So thank God for that. Can you turn to 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5? And this is how when offenses come, Jesus said they'll come, they will come. Um, this is what you do when those uh, feelings start happening. This is what you mm -hmm. need to do. Yeah. And this is so important. We are human, but we don't wage war with human plans and methods. We use God's mighty weapons, not mere worldly weapons, to knock down the devil's strongholds. With these weapons, we break down every proud argument that keeps people from knowing God. With these weapons, we conquer their rebellious ideas and we teach them to obey Christ. And uh, let's see, what was it, through five? Through yeah, five. Through five, yeah. <clears throat> we live in the world, but we don't fight like the world. Right, no, and you... um, I think the King James says we are to cast down imagination. Well, let me read it from King James. And uh, For though we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or fleshy, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So, we have to be focused on Christ. Right, we you got to cast down those imaginations, those reasonings, those thought processes. 
you know, somebody says something or does something and immediately those thoughts start turning. That person doesn't like me. Um, I, you know, they, they are, they did or said that to me yeah, and I'm going to do this. They're whispering about me. They're talking right. about me. They're, you know, that's all, that's all from the pit of hell. Right. Even if they are, I mean, here's the thing, mm -hmm. even if they are talking about you, you know what? Maybe they're leaving somebody else alone. You be strong. Be strong in the in Rex. We're going to read that in a minute here. I'm turning to it right yeah. now. Yeah. So the thing is, we live in the world, but we don't fight like the world. And we already talked about that. But every, uh, every battle that we face, and I read this in a devotional just the other day, and I thought this was so good. Every battle you face ultimately is a spiritual battle. Every conflict is a contest with Satan and his evil bunch. So anytime you're facing something, a conflict, ultimately it is a spiritual battle. There's a spiritual force behind it. Mm -hmm. Even if it seems like it's, you know, something really uh, mild or whatever, it's, it is a spiritual attack coming against you and you can't fight it mm -hmm. with, the world. You have to fight it with the weapons that God has given us. Right. And you know, Tammy, I think we need to address this. I think a lot of times when people get into offense, the first thing we want to do is run, mm -hmm. right? Oh, somebody did that to me. Somebody said that. I mean, I am no different. I am no different. When, when bad things happen to me, the first thing I want to do, the devil's like, run, 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 run. And I think that's what happens in churches. You know, oh, this person looked at me wrong. This person said this to me. Oh, they didn't say hi to me. Oh, they didn't greet me. Oh, you know, they don't think I give enough money or whatever, you know. Um, it's the same at work. Oh, that guy got a promotion and I didn't. Oh, he makes more money than me and I should be making more money. I'm out of here. <clears throat> well, you know what? That is exactly what Satan wants you to do. Mm -hmm. He wants you to go on the run. So he's creating offense through situations and circumstances in your life so that you will take off and potentially miss out on the great blessing of sticking it out, listening to the Holy Spirit, listening to the Word of God. Let me read this scripture. You've, you've got it here in yeah, your notes. Ephesians, um, 6, Ephesians 11. 6, 10, and 11. I'm going to read 10 too. Finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God. This is the problem. A lot of Christians only have on one piece of the armor, and it's usually their shoes so they can run. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the tricks or the wiles, as the King James says, of the devil. What are you putting on? Are you putting on God's armor to fight this stuff or are you just playing around? Okay, let's Yeah, and here. if you <clears throat> don't put on the armor and you don't stand and fight against it, you will be trapped in those tricks or those wiles of the devil. And when I see that word wiles in the King James, I think about um, Wile E. Coyote, which is why I think they came up with that name in Looney Tunes. And you see that if you've ever watched that cartoon, that the coyote is constantly trying again and again and again to catch the roadrunner, to trick him, to trip him up. And if you think about that, um, every conflict ultimately is a spiritual conflict and Satan is like that wild e coyote that's trying to catch you, trip you up, make a trap for you. I mean, in that cartoon, he would like go ahead and, you know, make a trap in the road or whatever to try to get the road runner to fall. And um, I don't know, I think there's just a good visual image uh, of what the devil tries to do is to every path that you're going to take, he's trying to get in the way to cause something to come against you and and using people to do it to get you so offended. I I don't want to talk about this. Okay. These two points right here. I want to save these for the next time, but I do want us to talk about this right okay. here, Tammy. She's got notes here that I want us to look at. Um, so you want to talk yeah. about that? So <laughs> I'll turn while you talk. Yeah, walking. <coughs> Walking in the love of God, he's going to read um, gonna Second Timothy 3, 1 through 9. Sorry. Second Timothy mm. 3. 
So do we have the right to be offended? As believers in Jesus Christ, do we have the right to be offended when somebody does us wrong? I think, um, hmm. do we have the right? I, I would say probably yes, we do have a reason, potentially, to be offended. We have a choice to be offended, but we don't really have a right. Mm -mm. We don't have the right to be offended because Jesus told us, we already read it, you have to forgive and you have to forgive again and you have to forgive again. Jesus didn't say, um, yeah, they did that to you once, so <coughs> you forgave them, but you know, they did it again, so yeah, you, you have a right. You have a right to be offended. Jesus did not say that. Mm -hmm. And um, when somebody is not walking in love, um, they might act like a Christian, like with self-righteousness, but denying the power of God. And the power of God is love. Mm -hmm. God's power is love and forgiveness. So if you're uh, feeling like you have the right to be offended and you're refusing to forgive, then you are not walking, walking in, Christ. in Christ. You're not, you're denying mm -hmm. that power of God. You have that form of godliness. You appear to be a Christian, but you are acting like you're not. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, if you are offended, and if you are known by Christ, and He is known to you in your heart, hopefully the Holy Spirit is convicting you and saying, look, you need to forgive and get out of this Get out of this area. Mm -hmm. Get over where I am because this is a day, the, the ice is thin here and you're going to fall through. Let me read this in uh, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 9. You should also know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times. And let me tell you, we are there. Mm -hmm. For people will love only themselves and their money. Okay, check. <laughs> no, that's two. Um, they will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, three, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful, four, unloving and unforgiving, five and six, they will slander others and have no self-control, they'll be cruel and have no interest in what is good, they will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride and love pr pleasure rather than God, they will act as if they're religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. You must stay away from people like that. They are the kind who work their way into people's homes and win the confidence of vulnerable women who are burdened with the guilt of sin and controlled by many desires. Such women are forever following new teachings, but they never understand the truth. And these teachers uh, fight the truth just as Janus and Jambres fought against Moses. Their minds are depraved and their faith is counterfeit, but they won't get away with this for long. Someday, everyone will recognize what fools they are, just as happened with Janus and Jambres. Where are we yeah. Going? Well, just to say that um, those works of the flesh, those things that we're living in that stuff now and that it's going to be there. So you've got a lot of opportunity to be offended. Right. You've got a lot of opportunity for. And there was a whole uh, long list there. You should go back and right. read that list. There's a lot of things. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I get offended driving down Memorial Drive when somebody cuts me off or someone's going real slow. I'm like, what are they doing? Don't they know that I have something to do right now? Mm -hmm. I mean, get out of my way, people. So, yes. hmm. so um, are you reading 24, 16? Acts 24, 16, or did you just uh, talk about I think about let's it? wait for that one. Okay. I want to jump down here since we're almost at the end here. We'll finish this we're up next end week. We're going to right here. Yeah. Um, right there. We're not going to talk about this okay. to the, this week. So Psalm 35, 11 to the end. It's a little bit long, but we can read it. Psalm 35. Starting with 11. 11 to the end. Ooh, do you want to read that? I'm yes. Let you read that. I will read that. Malicious witnesses rise up. They ask me of things that I do not know. They repay me evil for good to the bereavement of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. 
I humbled my soul with fasting and my prayer kept returning to my bosom. I went about as though it were my brother or my friend. I bowed down mourning as one who sorrows for a mother, but at my stumbling they rejoiced and gathered themselves together. The smiters whom I did not know gathered together against me. They slandered me without ceasing like godless jesters at a feast. They gnashed at me with their teeth. Lord, how long will you look on? Rescue my soul from their ravages, my only life from the lions. I will give you thanks in the great congregation. I will praise you among a mighty throng. Do not let those who are wrongfully my enemies rejoice over me, nor let those who hate me without cause wink maliciously. For they do not speak peace, but they devise deceitful words against those who are quiet in the land. They open their mouth wide against me. They said, Aha, aha, our eyes have seen it. You have seen it, O Lord. Do not keep silent. Stir up yourself and awake to my right and to my cause, my God and my Lord. Judge me, O Lord, my God, according to your righteousness, and do not let them rejoice over me. Do not let them say in their heart, Aha, our desire. Do not let them say, We've swallowed him up. Let those be ashamed and humiliated altogether who rejoice at my distress. Let those be clothed with shame and dishonor who magnify themselves over me. Let them shout for joy and rejoice who favor my vindication, and let them say continually, The Lord be magnified who delights in the prosperity of his servant, and my tongue shall declare your righteousness and your praise all day long. Go back and read that again slowly. I know we went through that quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing about this set of scripture is this is about somebody who's really been wronged. I mean, they have done really wickedness and evil against this person. This is not some perceived offense. This is not some they looked at me the wrong way or they didn't invite me to this or that. This is true, uh, terrible wrong that has been done. And this, uh, in this Psalm, David is writing, he's asking for God to be the one to take care of this. But what's really important is at the very beginning when we started reading, um, so they were being malicious, rising up against him, um, repaying evil for good. Verse 13, but as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. So he mm -hmm. was, when they were sick, he was praying for them. Um, when I humbled my soul with fasting. So he fasted for these people who had wronged him. Fasting, praying for them. My prayer kept returning to my bosom. I went about as though it were my friend or brother. I bowed down mourning as one who sorrows for a mother, but at my stumbling they rejoiced. So mm. talk about being spitefully used and taken mm. advantage of, but this is what we are to do. Um, you don't rejoice over those who uh, have hurt and upset you that they are um, sick or that they are or that they in are uh, doing poorly yeah. or not prospering. Right. I went you about for that. You I went about as though as were it. my friend or my brother. I bowed down mourning as one who sorrows for a mother. So he looked at these people as the family. Mm -hmm. You know, this is my family. Uh, I have to look at them as that and I have got to pray for them and I've got to um, you know, consider them as family and, mm -hmm. and forgive them. But at the same time, he's crying out to God, you're going to be the one to avenge me. You're going to be the one that's going to take care of this. I don't have to do this. Uh, they're doing terrible things against me, but I'm not taking it into my own hands. I'm going to pray for them. Mm -hmm. And God, you're going to take care of it. Mm -hmm. So, um, you, you have here, um, 24, Acts 24, 16. This will be our last scripture. And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward man. So let me read that in the uh, New Living. Because of this, I always try to maintain a clear conscience before God and everyone else. In other words, no offense. Um, <laughs> I, I try so hard to do that, to stay out of offense. I know when I'm offended. I know when I'm upset. I know when things aren't going my way and I get crabby and agitated and frustrated and, and boo-hoo, poor me. You know, I know when that happens to me and 
as soon as I get into that, I'm trapped. Mm -hmm. I'm stopped. I can't function in the anointing of God to help anyone. You can't function when yeah. you are in offense. So uh, what we have to strive to exercise. What is that? The word say? exercise is in there. To always, I exercise myself to have a conscience void of offense. So you have to work at it. You have to work at it the key toward is God and toward men. In other words, we don't, we don't work towards our, for our righteousness. That's yeah. something God gives us. But we strive to be holy. What is that? Separated unto God. We stay away from sin and evil. Well, that, that's work. Right. We have and to do this that. work is not a work of the flesh. It is spending time with God in prayer, reading the Word of God, Praying in the Spirit. Praying for your enemies. Praying for those people. And those who spitefully yeah. use you. Praying for them, just like we just read in Psalms. Yeah. That's how you exercise and you strive to have your conscious mm -hmm. void of offense. Well, this is going to be an interesting conversation, and we're going to continue this. I didn't think this would uh, take more than 20 minutes. It's almost taken 37 minutes to talk about mm -hmm. this, but that's good. This is a good Bible study, and I hope you continue with us as we go throughout this because you probably need to hear this like everybody else on the planet. So let's pray okay. and talk to God right now. Father, we just thank you for, the, for this awesome study that you're bringing us into and that you're teaching us. Lord, we pray that everyone who's listening and watching to this while watching this, will receive everything they need to get free from the trap of offense. And Lord, we don't want to be offended. We don't want to stay trapped in our own uh, hurt uh, and hard hearts and uh, victimization and feeling wronged and on and on and on. Lord, we don't want that. We want to be used by the Holy Spirit for the things of God and to help people. Lord, we know that the whole world is marching lockstep together into the pit of hell. And, uh, but for us, it's going to continue. We need to pray. We need to reach out to people, Lord. But if we're offended and trapped by that, we're not going to do anything. And that's what Satan wants. Father, forgive us and cleanse us and wash us, we pray tonight. And Lord, we just pray that uh, you would be with us as we continue this study uh, in the weeks ahead. We bless you and praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so, so that you can be uh, made aware on your phone uh, that these are upcoming. Uh, hit the notification bell so that you get notified. Uh, leave a comment. We like to read your comments. And uh, just let us know what you think. You know, or maybe the Holy Spirit will give you a word about something that we're talking about. If you've not been to Cornerstone Alive and you don't go to church somewhere, we'd love to have you come and visit and come, and, come up and introduce yourselves to us. We're always out in the sanctuary after service talking to people or praying for people. And uh, it's a good time. We love this church. We love this place because God or this place where the Holy Spirit lives. Mm -hmm. We love this. We love that God has blessed us here on, at 350 Park. And we would love to have you come and participate with us. It's a good place where the Holy Spirit has chosen to place the name of Jesus. God bless and you. I would like to add, be like the roadrunner who is always a step ahead of the coyote mm -hmm. and always aware of the trap that's being set. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, and we hope to see you soon.